Okay. So now I would uh, like to start with the module number one. चलिए शुरू करते हैं बच्चा. In between, if you people have any doubt or something like, you can easily uh, raise the concern and you can ask me about that. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, we had the module one. Okay, in the module, uh, just a second. Okay. Now, in the module one, we try to understand that uh, what are the, what is the legal system, essential elements of legal system. All right. Now, let me tell you, sir, what did we try to learn on that? हमने ये जाना था that if any country we want to have a solid legal system. We have to learn that what are the elements, what are making the legal system. It is just not about the law. Law is one of the primary ingredient, of course, yes. Okay, so law contains what the provisions. All right. But along with that, rules are also there. Rules are, I would say, the support to procedure. Okay. I give you example like this. That suppose there is Indian Penal Code. Over there, it is mentioned that if somebody is making the theft and something like that, then definitely the police will arrest. But how the police will arrest? What are the police power? How the court case will run? So we have the entire procedural code called CRPC. All right, CRPC is not for the people; it is for the courts, lawyers, and the police, right? So rules are there. After that, the second thing is like uh, notifications are there. Okay. After that, circular is also there. All right. After then, uh, courts are also there. Definitely, courts are playing a very vital role in that. Okay, uh, advocates and lawyers are also there. Parliament of country is also there. Why I am saying the parliament of the country? The reason is, parliament is the source from where all the laws are getting passed. Are getting passed. I guess you know about this, right? Parliament is is such a place where all the laws are getting passed. All the laws are getting passed, right? I guess now it's uh, more visible. If I'm not wrong, okay. Take it. Over. And above all these things is nothing but what the Constitution of India. Constitution of India is uh, above everything. In fact, the no law can be sourced until which is against the Constitution. In fact, uh, in the last month, in not even the last month, still the things are uh, the talk of the town, and that is the electoral bond. While teaching these things, if you remember, we had a long discussion. If I'm not wrong. हमने काफी लॉन्ग डिस्कशन किया था इसके ऊपर इनफैक्ट आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट वन सेक्शन 497 ऑफ द इंडियन पिनल कोड आल्सो याद है आप लोगों को 497 एडल्ट्री किसी को याद है कुछ जो अपन ने पढ़ा था उस उस टाइम पे हेलो अरे वही वाला कि भाई यू डोंट नो अबाउट सेक्शन 497 ऑल राइट लेट मी शो यू अपियर देखो What section 497 was trying to say? उसके बारे में थोड़ा हम पढ़ लेते हैं। First of all, confirm that whether this Google Chrome 
is visible to you or not i guess uh, yes this one maybe yeah this one yeah. is it visible confirm this one huh? thank you muskan now when we just read right now this section 497 of ipc what it is trying to say so please look at so basically it is written like this that it is criminalizing the adultery now what does it mean uh, that uh, adultery so if you come to section 497 in the indian code look this is exactly the language written over there what is written here that whoever has sexual intercourse with the person who is and whom he knows or has reason to believe to be the wife of another man this one is very important without the consent or convenience of that man that man here refers to husband such sexual intercourse not amounting to the offense of rape but he is guilty of the offense of adultery and shall be punished with the imprisonment of either description of a term which may extend to the five years or with the fine or with both in such case the wife shall not be punishable as an abettor so many ek example aapko bataya tha ki bhai if one person has the relation with any lady physical relation of course but the relation had been made without the consent of the husband then husband has the right to file the suit against that person that man not on the wife wife ke upar koi case nahi lagega right on that person who had the relation and once the crime is proved he can go to the jail for maximum period of you tell me he will go to the jail for the maximum period of come on guys it is written there kuch beta dekho it is the online session and in the online session i cannot see you so the point is in order to increase the interaction my request is like you keep on answering in the chat box agar kuch baatein shaate karte rahoge to kya hoga ki bhai mere ko bhi bore nahi lagega ye pura session theek hai five years but this entire section 497 adultery was challenged in the supreme court uh in the supreme court i'm telling you guys the uh, 497 uh adultery the right kerala lawyer see kalishwaram raj kalishwaram raj so this is the man who is the lawyer in the kerala high court later on he went to the supreme court of india and in 2016 guys he i would say uh, <coughs> made the history in this country how come he argued in the court in one case that my lord listen to this uh, content of the of the law what is written over here dekho if you see the content of the law it is written that if anyone has this sexual intercourse with a person who knows that she is the wife of somebody else without the consent or convenience of that man if he does this intercourse then it becomes the crime ultimately what is the interpretation of the section 497 सेक्शन 497 का ये इंटरप्रिटेशन निकलता है कि भाई रिलेशन बनाना गलत नहीं है अब बात समझ लो रिलेशन नो इश्यू मयंक चल रहा है कोई बात नहीं बात समझो सेक्शन 497 ये कहता है कि रिलेशन बनाना गलत नहीं है बट रिलेशन विदाउट कंसेंट ऑफ द हस्बैंड इफ यू हैव मेड देन इट इज अ क्राइम देन इट इज अ क्राइम the constitution of india is giving you the right of freedom right of independence right of privacy does it give you or not and that right doesn't get taken away even after uh, the marriage so he challenged like this that if you are saying that wife can make the relation only after the consent of the husband then don't you think that you are treating the woman as the asset of the man logically yahi hua na aap woman ko मैन की एसेट आप ट्रीट कर रहे हो दैट अंटिल ही गिव्स द कंसेंट ही कांट मेक द रिलेशन इवन इफ शी वांट्स सो अल्टीमेटली शी इज जस्ट लाइक अ असेट इट इज द वायोलेशन ऑफ द प्रीवियसी वायोलेशन ऑफ द फ्रीडम 
what is mentioned in the constitution of india and therefore this entire provision is unconstitutional and supreme court of uh, this country listened to this argument and allowed that now this 5 years of jo imprisonment hai yahan pe that 5 years imprisonment will not be given now so what i'm trying to see if you see that is section 497 of ipc decriminalized if you just type like this you will get uh, the lot of contents over there decriminalized all right it is written that uh, joseph shine versus the central government union of india stands for joseph uh, i would say uh, central government adultery was a criminal offense try to understand it was under section 497 until september 2018 when the supreme court of india decriminalized in the landmark judgment in the joseph uh, shine versus union of india so today that man will not go to jail for the 5 years but maximum remedy what is available to husband is just to get the divorce unconditional divorce so can i say like this that the practice of last 160 years just got abolished by considering the constitution of india above everyone just tell me one thing hello come on can i say that constitution of india was placed above everything of course yes and therefore i'm telling you guys the constitution of india you know jo maine aapko kaha tha na the main sources constitution of india plays a vital vital role excuse me all right vital role in the law making in the law making all right so that's why the constitution should always be in fact right now you see electoral bond what a modi government uh, issued in the year of 2018 but in the recent judgment what happened i guess everyone knows about it in the recent judgment indian supreme court has considered this electoral bond as unconstitutional because it is violating the right of uh, right to information right to information is the constitutional right of every citizen of india as being a public authority the uh, i would say the you know political party cannot uh, hide the information that who are the donors donors and all that so it is compulsory for them it is compulsory for them to de- you know declare the donations ye ghatna aapko pata hai pranamika muskan and mayank agar ho sakta to answer de sakte hai aap log electoral bond ke bare mein pata hai aap logo ko ठीक है ओके कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नाउ आफ्टर देन हु इज द मेन अदर एसेंशियल एलिमेंट और इन द लॉ ज्यूडिशियल सिस्टम आई वुड से द लॉ स्टूडेंट्स लॉ रिसर्चर्स एटसेट्रा सो देयर आर सो मेनी थिंग्स व्हाट वी कैन ऐड इनटू द एसेंशियल एलिमेंट्स ऑफ द लीगल सिस्टम ऑलराइट after then the second thing is what we learned in the module number 1 i want to draw your attention with is so if you remember the second point what we tried to learn it was the law and international trade so over there i tried to explain only one thing if you remember that <laughs> while i talk about the international trade basically we have this uh, kinds of transactions involved let's say indian wants to buy assets outside india any foreigner wants to invest or buy property in india export import after then uh, borrowings outside india means like taking the funds out of india to bhai bharat ke kai sare log foreign se loan lete hain okay borrowings outside india theek hai 
एंड सो मैनी मोर ट्रांजेक्शन आर कवर्ड अप बाकी भी कई सारे ट्रांजेक्शन वहाँ पे हैं वे आर दे आर टेकिंग दू बॉरिंग आउटसाइड इंडिया बट यू हॉट टू बी वेरी केयरफुल वाइल यू नो हैविंग दिस ट्रेड वाई इन इंडिया यू शुड हैव अ वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट रूल्स रिगार्डिंग दिस वाई वाई I try to explain that while we are going to internationally, our Indian rupees don't work. International transactions, international transactions don't recognize Indian rupees as currency. Indian rupees as currency. Indian rupees as currency. For that, you have to depend. You know, Indian government is heavily dependent upon US dollars. I think all of you know that's the most prestigious currency internationally. Not even pound, US dollars. So everywhere you are going, everybody is accepting what US dollars. So today, US dollars is unofficially considered as international currency. Unofficially, nobody has declared. But in most of the countries, even if you don't use their a uh, home currency but if you are transacting in us dollars it is the most common medium of exchange do you agree with me aap dubai se kharidna chaho kuch paise even though you don't have dinars but aap chaho to us dollar pay karke wahan se kuch aap buy kar sakte hain do you agree with this All right. So answer me one question: If you are importing more and exporting less, how the transactions are happening? So I have told you that if you are importing more, governments, foreign reserves will go down. Foreign reserves will reduce or decrease. But if you are exporting more, foreign reserves will Foreign business will, I would say, increase, and therefore the Indian government should make such a law. What kind of law they have made to <coughs> protect the foreign reserves? The first one I would like to say the FAM. Okay, FDI regulation, ODI regulation. Then uh, commercial borrowing, external commercial borrowing regulations. Money laundering act, or rather, prevention of money laundering act, like they have made it. In order to promote the international trade, we have certain treaties also. Now, what kind of treaties we may have? The treaties like DTAA. DTAA stands for the double. taxation taxation avoidance agreement and country to country we have different different foreign trade policies known as the ftp i hope you are understanding so we have this everywhere okay third point what we discussed it was about it was about politics and legal system and legal system so yes i would say politics and legal system both are going together for example uh, when we had uh, the tension with pakistan or china suppose jab bhi humko tension tha hame pakistan aur china ke beech mein what we have done we started increasing import duty okay starting increasing what import duty now due to the increase in import duty what happened that whatever goods we were buying from pakistan or china they become expensive goods became expensive and if it is expensive people of india would like to buy or they will they would like to avoid the buyings answer to that question is they would like to avoid the buyings isn't it they would like to avoid the buyings and this is how you can control the trade control the politics 
and, and, and the trade depends like depends like am I clear and there's so many more examples we can take it but yes politics whether national international definitely affects our uh, internal uh, laws also so we have to be very careful while we are going with the international trade because sometimes if we got stuck in such a situation where instead of having the benefit to the country if it is lost to the country then it, it uh, creates a lot of problem it creates a lot of problem we should try to avoid it thank you thank you muskan and pranamika good now next point what we try to, to learn it is the ADRs ADR stands for alternate alternative dispute a resolution mechanism alright now what we tried to learn in this alternative dispute resolution mechanism so definitely you try to understand when there is a contract between two parties suppose and if uh, there is a dispute later on they will go to the court you all know this right we will go to the court but what is the biggest problem in India as far as the court is concerned the justice in the court is very slow do you agree with the statement delivery of justice in India is very slow right हमारे यहाँ पे justice मिलना इतना आसान नहीं है it is very slow so answer me one question that uh, what solution we can provide in the contract so that our justice at least becomes fast so in the contract they don't in order to resolve the disputes in order to I would say here in order to resolve the dispute what they agree like they put they put the mechanism in the contract itself how to resolve the conflict and one of the best okay best thing what the law is supporting is arbitration I guess many of you might have heard about the arbitration and it is the revision kind of thing so don't expect a depth in that because in this one and a half hours I have to complete the entire syllabus so our here is a speed okay so first is the arbitration now what do we mean by here the term called the arbitration in the arbitration in the arbitration I would say the parties themselves are allowed parties themselves are allowed to select their own judges okay they can select their own judge they will listen the matter they will listen the matter and then pass the judgment pass the decision let me tell you guys here whatever decision is passed okay it is as good as the decision as good as decision passed by the court and binding to all the parties all the parties in the contract all the parties in the contract I guess uh, some of the students were there while I was discussing this thing aapko yaad hai ki jab hum discuss kar rahe the to aap mein se kuch log wahan pe the hello all right so we have basically so many point arbitration bhi tha ek aur aaya tha negotiation agar aapko yaad ho to ek aur bhi tha jisko apan mediation kehte hain one more was there if you remember that was the conciliation conciliation all right 
now what we have to learn for exam as far as the exam is concerned we have to just understand about the feature of each and every process that what happens in negotiation decision taken in the negotiation whether it is binding or not aapko jo main aapko padhna hai wo binding or not in fact i have already shared you know this uh, material aap uske upar dekh lena so we'll learn about it so guys once you complete all this part i can say your module number 1 gets over module number 1 gets over that's what the syllabus over there theek hai thank you pranamika for answering this all right okay yahan tak sabko samajh matlab not in depth of course but what or i done so far the basic is clear brief is clear in everyone's mind you can just simply type the word yes thank you pranamika ओके दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन उसका कि आई एम बी पॉइंट कौन कौन से हैं तो आई एम बी पॉइंट में आपको ये दो चीज़ें समझनी है खास करके देर आर सो मेनी पॉइंट वो इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड और वो सब छोड़ो वो सब नहीं आने वाला या फिर हम ये कहेंगे कि वो सब उतना इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है हम ये कह सकते हैं देखो इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स एज फॉर इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स आर कंसर्न आपको ये सब कुछ स्टडी करना चाहिए फ्रॉम द मॉड्यूल नंबर वन द फर्स्ट यू राइट डाउन दी एसेंशियल एलिमेंट्स Essential elements of legal system. दूसरा है sources of law. So essential element and sources of law basically both are the same points. Basically both are the same points. So just a second. Yeah. Both are the same point. ये आपको पढ़ना है दूसरा आपको ये ADR mechanism मैकेनिज्म करना है ए डी आर मैकेनिज्म करना है these two topics are very important so after every module i request mujhe puchu ki important topics kon kon se hain so i will keep on giving this to aapko thoda help mil sakta hai theek hai theek hai bhai All right. Let's go to the module two now. In the module two, what we try to learn. So, first, what we try to learn was the feature of company. Second, what we try to learn is the lifting of corporate veil. Third, we try to learn about the incorporation of company. देखो ये सारी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स मैं आपको दे रहा हूँ दिस व्हाट यू हैव टू लर्न ठीक है फोर्थ आएगा प्रमोटर्स ऑफ द कंपनी प्रमोटर्स ऑफ द कंपनी सो एज फार एज द मॉड्यूल टू इज कंसर्न दिस फोर टॉपिक्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चलो आपको आईएमपी टॉपिक्स अभी ही बता रहा हूँ मैं Okay, these are the I would say IMP topics. What you have to focus on. All right. Okay. Now, let's uh, learn about the first point. What are the features of company? Features. So in the features, the first thing what we try to learn was first thing what we try to learn was right on guys the separate legal existence where we tried to learn that a company is uh, different from its uh, members and the shareholders and uh, therefore. actions of company cannot be treated as the actions of the members and for the wrong doing of the company members cannot be punished in even though the liability of the company is already exhausted like uh, assets of the company already exhausted they cannot hold the member of the company liable for that 
Second thing what we tried to learn, it was the limited liability. In the limited liability, if you remember, we had the three important concepts. Company having limited liability and company having unlimited liability. So when I speak about company having limited liability, we had the two important uh, short notes if you remember. The first is company. Let's go through colors. Company limited by liability. Over there we had you know the two important topics: company limited by shares, and second is company limited by by guarantee. Okay. A difference between the company limited by shares and the limited by guarantee in both the cases like members are liable but in the case of a company limited by shares the shareholders are liable only for what shareholders are liable to the extent of the share commitment so you know every share has the value let's say 10 rupees face value so once the 10 rupees are paid I would say here uh, the shareholders liability comes to the end so in both the cases they are not liable beyond what they have committed but the difference is the shares can be demanded at any point of time. This is very interesting part. All right, shares can be demanded at any time of company's lifetime. Whereas if I speak about if I speak about the guarantee, in the guarantee you have to understand that guarantee can be demanded. Guarantee amount can be demanded only on the occasion of only on the occasion of anyone has any idea only on the occasion of winding up not before that all right so these are the few i would uh, say the points what is limited liability all right our next feature what we have to understand it is about uh right on transferability of shares So then you can write down like uh, can own the assets in its own name after then can file the suit in its own name right. after then separate management from its ownership after then incorporated association incorporated person so these are some features of uh, i would uh, say the company what we try to learn uh, in this topic next one is about uh, lifting of corporate veil so what was in the lifting of corporate veil what did we try to learn over there in the lifting of corporate veil we try to learn that sometimes the company for format is getting misused company format is getting misused company format all right so in that case definitely who are for example one company has made a fraud with the people so company is technically artificial person so it cannot officially make any frauds so people behind the company are primarily liable do you agree with this statement these are the people who are primarily liable all right so basically if we see this concept company and its members are two different entities we all know this right company and its members or directors they are different all right but what principle says over here that in case of some frauds or wrongdoing the difference between the difference between 
I would say company and members or the directors will be removed, will be eliminated. Now the difference when eliminated, so what will happen because of that? So once the difference is eliminated, so what will happen guys? Huh? So can I say now, once the difference is eliminated, I would say for the actions of now for the actions of company who will be liable held liable now for the actions of company responsible members or directors will be liable directors will be liable so this is a concept in corporate law is known as what the lifting of corporate will or the piercing the way piercing means or uh, eliminate the difference between the company and the responsibles all right and uh, there were so many i would say um, the things we tried to learn the first one what we tried to learn was uh, judicial interpretations if you remember now judicial interpretation that was there if you remember in, I would say there's a question that what are the circumstances under which will corporate will of course will may get lifted right. may get lifted so the first thing what we have here is the judicial interpretation so our pass is judicial interpretation judicial interpretation in the judicial interpretation we had the points like this the first one what we tried to, to learn was to know the enemy character to know the enemy character when company is used to evade the taxes all right Third, we try to learn when company is used to avoid the contractual liability what you had. All right. When company is used to avoid labor, welfare. All right. When company is acting as the agent of the other company, and company is acting as an agent of the others. All right. And other thing is like if there are ultra virus acts beyond the powers. So these are the, I would say, the, some of the important circumstances when the corporate veil may get lifted, may get lifted, all right, of course. So this was something about uh, the lifting of corporate veil. The third point is about, I would say, incorporation of company. In the incorporation of company, I have nothing much to talk about. The reason we have just one topic to understand into that and that one is like the procedure. Two topics of or two topics, not one topic. Procedure to incorporate company. So I have already provided in my material, but uh, again uh, you try to see in the procedure to incorporate company what contents I want from you to write. So as far as the contents are concerned, you have to write like um, name reservation. Yeah, content to hai name resolution second thing what you have to write is like um, um, the directors and DIN DIN stands for the director identification number third what you need to emphasize is uh, spice form that's called the spice form now what is the spice form you just uh, see it is the application application 
फॉर्म टू इनकॉर्पोरेट कंपनी ये आपको लिखना होगा इनकॉर्पोरेट कंपनी अलॉन्ग विद दैट यू हैव टू राइट डाउन दिट व्हाट आर द डॉक्यूमेंट्स नीड टू बी अटैच ओके एंड एट द एंड व्हेन एवरीथिंग इज ओके द आर ओ सी विल गिव द सर्टिफिकेशन ऑफ सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन आर ओ सी विल गिव यू द सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन आर ओ सी विल गिव यू द सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन सो दिस मच वॉट यू नीड टू आई वुड से रिमेम्बर नाउ इन द सेम मॉड्यूल द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ द सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन significance all right now as far as the significance is concerned as far as the significance is uh, concerned i would say that you have to write uh, that it is a conclusive evidence it is a conclusive evidence of companies in corporation that means once it is issued cannot be revoked cannot be revoked all right so this was all about the incorporation now we are moving towards i would say the promoters promoters so in the promoters we have to understand that what is the definition of the promoter this is what you have to learn definition of promoter भाई आवाज बंद करवा विनती दीपिका ओके After then, we had discussed that a uh, what is the legal position? What is the legal position of promoter? So we try to learn that as far as the promoters are concerned, they are in fiduciary capacity. That means whatever they are doing, their doings are considered as their duty. all right one more question was that that can they ask for can promoter ask for remuneration and reimbursement of expenses but the answer to that question was if you remember no they can't because whatever they were doing it was their duty and on the the argument is that at the time of at the time of doing company was not existed whatever they have done they had done before that so company was not existing so there was no any contract there was no any contract and company is not liable for anything company is not liable for anything a promoter has done before its incorporation before incorporation all right so these are the points and the topics what you need to remember one more point is there like what about the pre incorporation contracts pre incorporation contract pre incorporation contract now as far as the pre incorporation contract are there you have to understand the meaning first of all that what's the meaning of pre incorporation contract right meaning so the first point what you have to remember here is the meaning so any contract which is incorporated before the incorporation 
by the promoter are known as pre incorporation contract second you have to learn about that uh, whether the company is liable is company liable is company liable so answer to the question is no it is not liable why it is not liable same logic company can't be liable and think what promoter has done before the incorporation so just because of these uh, two powerful uh, reasons i can say that incorporation contracts are void okay they are void please remember that okay till this uh, everyone clear you can simply type the word yes or no मिथांशी बेटा काले छे एग्जाम ने सोमवार से मतलब आ छे तमरो आ बदु करवाम छे प्रैक्टिस करवाम है गम है तारे 25 छे तो मां छो मिल नहीं का आ एक्टिविटी करी ले पर टाइम थे डिसिप्लिन थे एना पछि पाछो पे नाम जवानो छे ओके ओके आफ्टर देन व्हाट यू हैव टू लर्न इज अबाउट that's how pre incorporation contract is very important okay so once you complete this i would say your second module is completed now we are moving towards the module number 3 okay module number 3 uh but before i move on guys just take a small break of 5 minutes and then i will continue is it fine hello ek chhota sa break le lijiye theek hai uske baad mujhe sunte बोला घड़ियाल बहुत प्रीमियम छो हम तार फोन लाती बेका बाकी बद तार फोन ले मिनट खाली एक सेटिंग मारू पी आप
So sorry. Protein powder. Good. I like it. Dry fruit no powder. No, 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 no. Switch it, but ah. Jo. आख हाला नहीं फैमिली फोटो आई गयो घर करना आज मस्कूल इन फोन फोन में जैसे आज ही मुकुल छो करवा कोई नहीं ना थी नहीं अंदर बोलो बंद ना कर दी व्हाट्सएप ने वाईफाई या ना ब्लूटूथ मैं बनी कर चुका हूँ तो मैं स्कूल में एक और देखा हूँ आ काम छह मार वापस यदि दीपिका मारा हुआ ना बन चालू आया आया आता हूँ तीसरा मैं पप्पा 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 हमारा स्कूल नोट्स ना ये तो मैं जाऊँ चलता हूँ जो व्हाट्सएप में आया नहीं पप्पा अब घरेलू में टाइम इन स्लो चला आ ग्रीन कलर में घरेलू पास था हमारे बोला तो इको देखो वहाँ पर जा जा मम्मी एक सेकंड हाँ जग दिस वे हाँ जग दिस वे डन 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 नील हाँ नील रेटन भ्रमण ये चल करें आप जो वांधे होते करें अरे दीपिका अरे अम्मा भाई यार आखरी बांध हुआ दे जगदीश भाई ने पहले वो डेटा आवी क्यों से अच्छे नहीं हो और सुधीर ने एक आप अपने मेल में कुछ जो ही नहीं होते हैं रिटर्न प्रोसेस करा लेते हैं ना पार्थोनील नो आउट नील रिटर्न भरवा चुका है छह नील के पास बारे पानी दीपिका अ वाटरप्रूफ है I don't want to be able to do it. Dipika, you don't want to be able to do it. You don't want to be able to do it. Then you don't want to be able to do it. You don't want to be able to do it. You don't want to be able to do it. Dipika, you don't want to be able to do it. If you don't want to be able to do it, you don't want to be able to do it. If you don't want to be able to do it, you don't want to be able to do it. If you don't want to be able to do it, मुझे करवा दियो उसे हम यही तो वचन पढ़ी तो मुझे आती है। करवा तो करो जवाब चलो पहले। यार 
સાડી ત્રણસો મીટર દોઢસો લઈને બતાવી દીધું પછી તો હવે શું હોય ડિસ્કશન ઓફ ધી મોડ્યુલ થ્રી હલો ઓલ રાઈટ થેન્ક યુ પ્રિનામિકા So now we are going with the module 3 and uh, module 3 is talking about I would say capital and debt of the company all right that's what uh, the name or uh, rather the name is the capital and financing of the company now what are the imp topics and uh, what to learn into that so first is like you have to learn that what are the capital uh, sources and second is the what are the debt sourcing right. so as far as the capital source is concerned humne kya padha tha agar aapko yaad ho to what we people tried to understand so as far as the capital source is concerned we have the two important sources the first is the equity shares and um, the second one what we had it was the preference shares okay to aapko pehle pata hoga equity shares and preference shares types some questions are very important for example what is the difference between equity and preference shares so we try to to understand that uh, equity shares do not given any preferences over the preference shares preference shares are those shares which are given the two important preferences ओके तो कौन से वो दो प्रेफरेंसेस है लेट्स राइट ऑन डेट सोर्स आई विल टेक अ लेटर ऑन सो एज फार एज सो इन द कैपिटल सोर्स प्रेफरेंस शेयर्स जनरली दे आर गिवन द टू इंपॉर्टेंट प्रेफरेंसेस द फर्स्ट वन इज the first one is i would say dividend preference that means a uh, preference share holders would be paid the dividend above the equity share holders second is the capital redemption capital redemption that means uh, preference share holders would be paid the preference shares above the equity shareholders at the time of winding up at the time of winding up okay so these two are acting as what if i say this two are what is this two so this two what we have understood this is nothing but preferences preferences what is given to preference shareholders above the equity shareholders and i would say just because of uh, these preferences the shares are considered as the preference shareholders okay now one more important question what is uh, coming is uh, this is it that uh, how to issue the preference shares okay so you have one question that uh, how to issue the preference shares that's on the question how to issue preference shares how to issue preference shares so you have to learn the procedure this is what the procedure is first procedure is like you have to 
pass this special resolution in order to have that call the general meeting before that you have to call the general meeting pass the special resolution okay then issue the offer offer then receive the money and once the money is received allot the preferences allot the preferences okay so this is what is the procedure one more important question comes like uh, types of preferences and over there our with there are so many types like based on redemption based on uh, uh, accumulation of uh, the profit and lot of things we have lot of things we have but the major focus jahan pe humko dalna hai wo ye hai ki can a company issue any preferences which is irredeemable so answer to that question is no a company in india precisely cannot issue any preference shares which are irredeemable so guys if in india if the company wants to issue this the shares shall always be what redeemable okay so one more question comes like if they are redeemable right what is the maximum redemption period maximum redemption period right so if i speak about this part that what is the maximum redemption period so basically we have this chart to understand this chart all right we have two kinds of companies the first one is which is involved in infrastructural projects and another one which is not involved in infrastructural project so this is the point number 1 and uh, this is the point number 2 so the company not engaged in infrastructural projects and second is company involved in infrastructure projects so for this two we have the different types if company is not engaged in uh, infrastructural projects the maximum period for which the preference shares can be issued is the 20 years but if the company is involved then it can be 30 years but is 30 years means the 20 plus 10 why am i saying the 20 plus 10 are uh, the first 20 you can uh, enjoy the shares normally but uh, 21st year onward you have to start paying at least 10% okay at least 10% please remember so this 10 years the another 10 years is acting as like a emi facility every year you have to pay at least 10 so max to max within the next 10 years your entire preferences will be redeemed will be redeemed aram se usko redeem ho jayega theek hai so this 30 is 20 plus 10 now let's talk about how to issue the shares or modes to issue the shares right on modes to issue the shares so basically there are two modes to issue the shares the first mode is i would say private placement and uh, second is the public invitation so please try to understand when we are going with the public invitation as far as public offer is concerned then it is compulsory for the company to issue what the prospectus and we try to learn that what are the provisions of the prospectus right wo humne detail mein kiya tha shayad prospectus kaise issue hota hai wo apne padha tha na ipo kaise laati hai company hello please confirm ah yes muskan no issue but not only uh, these are these are the things what you have to study in detail and uh, remaining point i can recommend that you just uh, go over you that is fine no issue हो जाएगा ठीक है बट आई होप इन टू डेज क्लास यू पीपल फाइंड लिटल बिट ऑफ फ्रूटफुल ठीक है थोड़ा कुछ मतलब आपको ब्रीफ दे रहा हो कि भाई जो एक रिकैप जैसा हो जाएगा कि विद इन वन एंड हाफ आवर्स लाइक एटलीस्ट यू कैन गेट अ मैप दैट व्हाट यू शुड स्टडी आपको क्या पढ़ना चाहिए उतना तो आपको पता चल ही जाएगा ठीक है
तो फिर हमने आई के बारे में पढ़ा था प्रोस्पेक्टर्स इनफैक्ट फिर ट्राई टू लर्न दट वाइल वी आर इशूंग द प्रोस्पेक्टर्स वट आर द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ द प्रोस्पेक्टर्स सो इन द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द प्रोस्पेक्टर्स इफ यू पीपल विल रिमेंबर वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट देर इज मिनिमम सब्सक्रिप्शन देर शुड हैव दैट इज नाइन्टी परसेंट एंड ऑल दैट पार्ट वी ट्राई टू लर्न देन वन मोर पार्ट वी ट्राई टू लर्न इज द मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन मनी Now, what is the minimum application money and all that part? You try to learn on your own. Okay. After then, uh, we also try to learn that when we are going to the IPO, we have to issue the prospectus. Then you have to get registered. If it is a public invitation, you have to get registered in a uh, recognized stock exchange. So stock exchange will be there. Okay. You have to get registered where in the stock exchange, and it is compulsory to have that. Now this thing is. Compulsory when you are going with what public invitation, guys. If you are going through the, I would say the private placement, then these kind of compliances are not needed. Okay, so that you have to remember. These are the two modes to go for uh, the share issue. Then we tried to understand that uh, uh, what are the provisions related to the company wants to issue the security is with premium. So what is security premium? We try to learn. can company issue the shares at discount that also we tried to learn and the last topic what i would like to keep it is like the difference between difference between esop and swad equity shares ye bhi humne determine kiya tha agar aapko thoda kuch yaad ho to theek hai now with this i would like to conclude the shares part now we are going with the debt sourcing into the debt humne kya padha tha wo aap sabse pehle samajh lo in the debt like company has basically the three important sources to go for <gasps> three important sources the first one the company can go for the loan second the company can issue the debentures and the third one is company can go for the deposit okay now we have some questions the question number one what is the maximum limit of the borrowings maximum limit so again like we have the two important uh, points so maximum power of board of directors what maximum they can do and the second is what if board wants to exceed the limit specified what if the board wants to exceed the limit specified all right we have basically this uh, two points okay what if what if board wants to exceed the limit so basically what's the limit over here i would like to tell you that limit is as far as the limit is concerned limit is the sum of some of these three important ingredients all right the sum of these three important ingredients uh the point number 1 is paid up capital i can put like this here right paid up capital free reserves and uh, the last one is about securities premium account so total this three when you are just adding this is what the maximum okay i would like to tell you this is the maximum what the board can borrow by passing board resolution by passing what the chart board resolution and if the board wants to exceed this then they have to pass what the special resolution that's what only the option over here if the board wants to the board wants to exceed the limit it needs to pass what special resolution okay now as far as the debenture concept is concerned what kind of questions we have so in the debentures guys the questions is like the first question is the types of debentures to aapko padhna hai second important topic what we have it is like the difference between 
difference between shares and uh, debentures third is about redemption of debentures and over there you have to learn that uh, maximum redemption period all right so these are the important topics jo aapko debt mein samajhna hai aapko khas karke all right after then we are moving towards the power and administration that is the third topic of the module number 3 power and administration so basically power is coming from these two important documents okay so power deriving documents so power deriving documents has basically this two the first one is the memorandum of association and second one is what i would say articles of association aapko pata hai in dono ke bare mein bhai batao do you know about this hello correct theek hai now there are certain principles jo aapko in dono mein samajhne hai the first principle is the doctrine of ultra virus act doctrine of very very important acts and its legal significance eo as far as is concerned we have to learn about the doctrine of constructive notice and doctrine of indo management with its exception now what we have learned in the doctrine of ultra virus act as far as the mo is concerned that powers are generally given in the memorandum so company can not do anything beyond the powers and if the company wants to go beyond the powers then that act become void that act become void and company is not liable the person who signed it will be personally liable that is what we people uh, tried to learn for that right wo humne padhne ki koshish ki doctrine of constructive notice kya kehta hai ki that basically memorandum and articles these two are public documents so anyone who is uh, transacting with the company is always uh, assumed to have the complete knowledge of is always assumed to have what complete knowledge of memorandum and articles so their argument that at the time of making the contract they were not aware about the memorandum and articles that argument won't be considered that argument won't be considered this concept is known as what doctrine of constructive notice now what is indoor management sometimes the third party knows the power but the power is attached to certain formalities or the conditions like uh, uh, they need to pass some special resolution or they need to pass some or uh, 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 signatures they need to take somebody's approval so approval is not taken company has the power but subject to that formality so what is the third party knows the memorandum power but doesn't know about the formality so law protects what law kya kehta hai that if you know the power that is sufficient if you do not know the formality whether it is complied or not so in the doctrine of indoor management the law gives you the exemption to believe to believe that fine you have right to assume that whatever formality a company is supposed to complete they have completed it and then the transaction is passed so company cannot take uh, this disadvantage company cannot take this disadvantage stating that <coughs> stating that uh, the person doesn't know about the compliance so guys even though the person doesn't know about the compliance uh, he can uh, rely upon that and exemption is given by the law to him am i clear to all of you you can simply type the word you saw no bache baat samajh mein aayi aap logo ko hello so above them guys i'm telling you uh, there's a board of directors and above the board there is a shareholders and as far as the shareholders are concerned both of this entities are deriving the power from where both of these entities are deriving the powers from the above two documents all right and they cannot go against these two documents okay so now law has prescribed the company law itself has prescribed what they have prescribed that 
certain uh, I would say the uh, tasks or certain acts board can directly do certain acts board can directly do without taking the consent of without the consent of shareholders without the consent of shareholders and there are certain acts for which for which the shareholders consent is needed mandatory mandatory now as far as the shareholders consent is concerned consent is concerned we have basically the two types the first is the ordinary resolution and second is what a special resolution ordinary resolution means the i would say the consent with more than half majority and special resolution means what at least 75% majority so sometimes i can ask you the question that uh, explain me about the difference uh, between uh, ordinary resolution and the special resolution then i guess guys you should have the answer to this to, to how the things are going however all this is subject to what who will define that uh, whether ordinary resolution will get passed or special resolution will get passed okay so guys answer to that that question is right on corporate law will define who will define which kanun ye define karega okay so company law defined it okay so guys with this i would like to conclude that uh, whatever i wanted to discuss uh, as far as this uh, module number 3 is concerned to wo sari cheeze maine yahan pe complete kar diye all right now after module 3 we are moving towards just a second we are moving towards the module number 5 kya ho raha hai isko ek second please till everyone is clear you can simply type the word yes if you have understood this okay 